And my name is Marlon Smith. Very grateful to be here. We, I invited some industry experts to share what's going on. You know, again, this is entitled COVID-19, the stock market, Wall Street, and your money. Okay, how do I move through this? How do I, you know, grow through this? There's a lot going on. There's a lot of different information out there. So I wanted to bring on a gentleman who's really passionate about making a difference. And this is a man who I, I truly trust, somebody I respect, a man who's had 23 years of experience in financial services and not just experience, but success in financial services. And so what's so amazing about this gentleman is he's been married uh, 27 years. He'll be celebrating 28 years this year. He's got four kids and three grandchildren. And so when I'm about to bring him up, you're going to be like, he is too young to have some grandchildren and to be married 28 years. What? That's amazing. So here's what I'd like for you to do. Would you please put your hands together? Get ready for my brother from another Mr. Dr. Reverend Tony Jackson. Come on up. Hey, Marlon, Marlon. I was wondering who you were talking about there for a minute, man. I, I know, I know. Oh, good, yeah. How it is. You? And look, and look, Tony, we're so excited to have you, man, because look, people are already posting questions. You know, someone says, do you recommend buying stocks now? If so, how does one buy, you know, interested in learning how to invest? So again, this is great because again, we're talking about resources. And so what we're going to talk about really tonight is the economic impact of all that. And, you know, what was popped up in the Washington Post, they ran this ad. In the Washington Post, it says, the thing, the downturn exposes the reality of the U.S. economy. And that it was never really as strong as it seemed. And when we look at this dollar here, we see that it's fragmented. And what we found out is that our economy has been fragmented. There's some people who have done very well. There's some people who were doing okay. There's some people that were just really kind of surviving. And when you have a situation like we have now, what it does, it really exposes those fragments. And now, how do we pull this all together? How do we unite in, in one front? And how do we get information out that can really help people? The CARES Act uh, was just signed uh, into law just last week. And really, it has really six components to the CARES Act. Um, the first is the financial assistance for companies in need. And that's really, we're talking about your, your major companies, your, your big companies, uh, big business, uh, states, municipalities, cities, governments, those types of things. And then there's economic support for small businesses. And that's really, uh, you know, we really encourage you to seek out some of those things. And perhaps even next week, we could come back in and really highlight uh, really hone in on some of those things, but definitely you want to reach out. Uh, we have some resources for you. If you, again, if you email us at info at the real money coach, we can get some of those resources to you, get some of those links to you uh, where you, maybe you can take advantage of some of those things in terms of um, the small business, economic support, small business, uh, freelancers, independent contractors, those types of things. So now let's look at it in terms of in retirement specifically. Um, there's really some key points that I want to pull out. And number one is right now, there's also an opportunity. And the opportunity is there where if you have a 401k or you have a retirement account, uh, you can now get up to $100,000 and not pay the 10% penalty. So what happens is if you pull money out of your retirement account prior to being 59 and a half, you're going to pay ordinary taxes and you're also going to pay a 10% penalty. Well, as part of the CARES Act, what they're doing is they're eliminating the 10% penalty up to $100,000. And so you can pull $100,000 out of your qualified retirement plan and not pay the penalty. Now, if you are currently working and you have a 401k or 457 plan, it's really up to your employer and the plan administrator how they want to administer that. But most of the time, that's going to be done as a loan. But also part of the CARES Act, it allows you to, instead of doing the max loan, which was 50000 it now allows you to go up to 100000 if you're going to borrow out of your 401k, 457 plan, retirement plan those types of things. Now, the other interesting part of that 
is that when that occurs, there it does not avoid the taxes. So you still have to report that money as far as ordinary income for your tax return. But the law does allow you to stretch out that tax liability over three years. So in the essence, if you're a 22% tax bracket, you pull that money out, that 22,000 of taxes, you have over three years to actually pay for that. Now, so again, I think that's something that we really could drill down on maybe next week, talking about the tax implications of that, possibly talking about if this is a great time to do a rollover, because right now we have, we have two really great things going on is you have, the, you have taxes being low and they're really low compared to what we've been. You avoid the tax penalty and the fact that now if you roll out, you're buying at a low price because of the stock market. And so it's really a great time to maybe make some of those type of moves, converting to a Roth IRA or maybe looking at some other tax-free retirement vehicles. Now, also as part of the CARES Act in terms of the effect on retirement is the RMDs, the required minimum distribution. If you are 72 or older for the year of 2020, you do not have to take your RMDs. You do not have to take your RMDs. And so that could help a lot of people in terms of not having to pull that money and use it, paying taxes on it and that type of thing. So there, there are some really good things in this act. Um, you know, of course, the stimulus, of course, the help for small businesses and also being able to access uh, up to $100,000 of your qualified retirement money. So now it's a great time if you're in a position to take advantage of some of those things. So make sure, you know, you reach out to someone, us or someone that you're working with to look and see if any of those moves make sense for you, depending on where you are, how long you have to retire and all those types of things. But they really have loosened up some of the rules to allow people to get access to their money because of the current economic situation. When it comes down to it, two trillion dollars. I mean, uh, just let that let that sink in, y'all. Okay, two trillion dollars because just in the United States. I mean, I'm not talking about other countries. And so the stimulus package. I mean, what happened, Tony? Why? What's going on? Talk to me, bro. Yeah. How, how do we get here, right? What what yeah. made this necessary? Well, really, when we look at our economy and we look at the stock market in particular, there's really two very main indices that we really take a look at, and those are the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ. Now, the Dow Jones, a lot of people don't realize that, is the most common uh, indice that we look at. It's one of the biggest economic indicators, not only for the United States, but worldwide. And it's really only 30 companies that make up that Dow Jones index. And what you see on your screen right now is really a three-month uh, three graph. Uh, and if we look at this closely, what we realize is that the 52-week high was just over 29,000. And where the market closed that yesterday was just under 21,000. And so from the high point, that we had within the last year to where we were at the close of the market yesterday, we're down 29%. And again, this is a major uh, indicator of the strength of what's going on in the economy. And we think about the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones has been around since 1860s, right? And it is the 30 largest publicly traded companies. You know, today we're thinking about companies like Apple and Boeing and Coca-Cola, Golden Sachs, IBM, Microsoft, Nike, all those very big companies. The 30 largest company make up the Dow Jones. But as they go, so goes the economy. Uh, but again, you know, because we're riding high on, on gains over the past years, a lot of people really weren't alarmed about it. But when you look at these and you look at the last three months of what's been going on, uh, there's certainly... Um, is uh, an issue here. Wow. Thank you, Tony. I, look, I just, I, people are, man, the thing is just blowing up, man. People are commenting and like, so I want you right now to type in the chat box, what are you feeling? You just saw, you know, the Dow Jones, NASDAQ, uh, S&P 500. What's one word you're feeling after what Tony just shared? Just type it in the chat box, just so that 
You know, we just want to see some of the words, some of the emotions that you're feeling, the feelings. And again, it's no judgment, but I mean, look, I'll say I'm depressed, right? I mean, I just saw, you know, you're talking about 27, 29, 24% decrease. I mean, we have somebody that said, uh, uh, Sun Chen said, how do you rebound after you've taken such a hit? Let's talk about it from a historical standpoint. Okay. I want to talk about it from a historical standpoint because the charts that I just showed were really the last three months. And, you know, the thing about it, they said you, you have to learn from your history or you're wow. bound to repeat it, right? And so what I want to do is just really show this chart here from a historical perspective. And if we look at it closely, this is going from 1998 through 2019, okay? So we're, we're, we're talking about a 20-year period of time. And as we know, in the early 2000s, the market was falling. You know, you talk about that tech bubble. And here's the thing that, that's really pretty alarming about that is that it really took 24 months for us to hit the bottom. And so at, at the bottom of the 24 months, we we're at 29%. We're already at 29% today, uh, or as of yesterday, we we're already at 29% of the Dow Jones. This happens to be the S&P 500, where we're 27% down as of yesterday. But in, two, in the early 2000s, it took 24 months before we got that low. And so this fall that we're experiencing is even steeper. Now, what's even more important is how long did it take to come out of it? And or in, in this example that we're looking at, uh, tracking the S&P 500, it actually took eight years to get back to where it was when it started to decline. So it took eight years so we get to 2007 going into 2008. And if you were perfect in your timing, if you were perfect in your timing, you put money in in 1998 and you were perfect in your timing. We understand you can't time the market, but if you were perfect in your timing, you would have pulled out in 2008 before it crashed. But most of us don't know that we don't, we, we can't time it that perfectly. So you see it peaked at the end of 2007, 2008, and then it fell again to 38% under where it was. And that happened in a matter of 12 months, 38%. And so now, you know, I, I came through the early 2000s. It took me eight years to get back to where I was. And then overnight, <laughs> the real estate bubble burst, right? The mortgage bubble bust, right? And so now I lost 38% in a matter of 12 months. And then it took five years to get back to where I was. And so when we look at that in totality, in essence, you know, if we, we it would have taken us really 13 years to get back to where we was. And the other thing that we can't time is not just the market, but we can't time life. Mm -hmm. So it, what I mean by that, and if we haven't known it before now, is that we're mortal, right? We're mortal beings. Sure. And, you know, if you happen to, to pass, God calls you home at the bottom end of one of those downfalls, I mean, what does that mean? Or what does it mean if your retirement comes at the bottom of one of those and all those types of things. But there's a lot of variables to look at. Don't be alarmed, but just be informed and talk to someone that can help. You know, I love that, Tony, because, yes, yeah, success leaves footprints. Right. And what Tony's really saying is that, you know, I believe is you focus on what you do the best and you let others do the rest. And so with that, Tony, you know, there are some individuals that have hedged themselves from downside loss and, you know, and, and, you know, and they are rocking and rolling. And, and so let me ask you, I mean, what's a strategy you've been in the financial services industry, 23 years, you know, what, what, who, who are you modeling? What are you doing? Right. You know, to, you know, not feel this pain that so many people have identified, you know, in this chat. Well, what, what I want to do is show you the most quoted man in investing, right? We all okay. know him as Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett says this, he says, the number one rule in money 
is to never lose money. Mm. And the number two rule is never forget rule number one. Now, Warren Buffett <laughs> coming into uh, 2020 at $128 billion in cash. Okay, so he knows a little bit about money, right? And so how do we take this concept and bring it, make it live for people that we deal with every day? And how we do that is a concept we call indexing, fixed indexing, the power of indexing. And so now what you have on your screen is you have that same red line, same period of time from 1998 through 2019. Now the blue line is using the indexing concept. And we're gonna actually bring on an expert who's gonna explain exactly how the indexing works. But I'm just giving you an overview and letting you see right here what happens with the indexing in, in a real basic um, description is when the market goes up, you make money, but when the market goes down, you just move sideways. So you never lose your principal. You always uh, keep your gains from the previous year, and then it just continues to move up. And so when we look at this and we're following the blue line, uh, the market is, is going up in, in, you know, before, you know, 2000, but then the three down years of the 2000, those 24 months, you stayed exactly the same, right? And then when the market starts to go back up, you get to 2008, again, uh, you've recovered, you're, you're actually doing better than the market because you don't have to dig out of the hole. But then the market crashes in 2008, what happens? you stay the same. Now the market starts to go up again and now your account goes up again. And so this just shows us, and you can see there's points in time where the gap between the blue line and the red line is pretty tremendous. And so that's a lot of ground to make up. And because the market has done so well going, you know, from, um, you know, coming out of 2008, and getting to 2013 and beyond, a lot of people forget that that could happen again. And so, but this ends in 2019, but that's the concept that we believe is important for the important money. If the money's not important, then, you know, maybe this doesn't matter to you, but if the money is important, meaning that it's money that you have set aside for your retirement, or maybe it is money that you have uh, set aside to leave as inheritance or whatever the case may be, it may be a concept that you might want to consider for some of your money. I want to bring up our next guest, a lady who's really on a mission. And I just love the energy of this lady. If you think I'm passionate and I'm optimistic, right? You're going to really love this young lady because this lady is on a mission and her company uh, JP Financial is really doing some great things. JP Financial Group. Uh, her name is Joyce Palmer and basically started her company uh, in 2009. She's the managing partner of this financial services movement. Really, I love to say it because, I mean, she's got a team of committed advisors, wealth advisors, coaches, and so on and so forth. And so, yeah, Joyce, we're glad to have you on. How are you doing, Joyce? I am doing great, Marlon. Thank oh, you. The success leaves footprints. So you want to model people that have been successful. That's why when Tony, you know, brought up uh, Warren Buffett, you know, they asked him, "What's what's what's the number one rule to investing?" Warren, he said, "Rule number one: don't lose your money." They said, "Oh, okay, okay, okay. What's rule number two? <laughs> he said, "See rule number one." And so the next gentleman I'm going to bring up is a man who's on a mission. You know, just really has a big heart, wants to serve the world because he understands that for too long, it's really been those in the inside circle that get the information and they're the ones taking action. When other people, you know, have, you know, strong work ethics, striving for their families, but just don't have the right vehicle to get them where they want to go. And so this next gentleman is the uh, national sales manager for, excuse me, national sales manager for a company called Anico. And, and it's really phenomenal. His name is Michael Harden. And I'm very excited because he's going to really unpack for us how does indexing work? How does it work? You remember the red line, blue line, the stock market was going up and down and the, the blue was going up. And then when the stock market went down, it would just level off. 
So we're going to learn a little bit more about that. Welcome, Michael. How are you doing? Hey, Marlon. I'm doing great. Yeah, yeah. What makes us so phenomenal? And and I, and and folks, uh, again, Marlon, thanks for having me on tonight. Uh, Tony, thank you for having me on. Everyone, thanks for taking taking time to be here. These are crazy times that we uh, we are living in. And and if you'd ever told me that that when I got in this business that I would have lived through the dot com crash the mortgage crash, and now the coronavirus crash, I would have told you you were crazy because the market in this period of time has never done what we've seen. Right there it is. So when you see that blue line, here's something that, uh, uh, that, that Tony didn't tell you. If you did the math on the loss right now, if you look at his value of that orange line of 262,812 and do the math on that right now, the roughly, and I did 30% as I was sitting here listening to, to, to Tony and Marlon. If you do a 30% loss, which is roughly where we are, that person on that orange line has lost sev almost $79,000. They are now at a level that puts them back somewhere in 2015. They have lost five years, five years of their investment life. And if they had had the blue line, they would still have their $262,000. Now, $268,000, sorry, the one as short as six grand. So how does that work? Right. So let me talk to you about how this works. Right. These products that are indexed products are fixed products. They're not investments. You never, ever risk one penny of your money. What we do with these products is we use the performance of the S&P 500 index to determine the interest rate you earn on your money. And how does that work? So let me take you, let me take you through it kind of step by step, right? So when each, when, whenever you make, and I may say the word investment with this, but this is not an investment, right? So anytime you make a deposit in one of these index accounts, right, you can choose. You can choose one of two ways of, of earning interest on your money. You can choose that fixed account that you see on the screen. And currently that fixed account's paying a 4% interest rate. So I'm just turning it into dollars. I'm just turning it into $4,000 to make it make the discussion easy. So, so you could check that box and tell us you want us to pay you that amount of interest in the next 12 months. If you check the indexing box, the one that says annual point to point, if you check that box, now what you've told us is that I don't want the interest. I want the opportunity for the stock market to determine my interest rate. I want the opportunity to make more. And when you do that, we take the $4,000 that we would have given to you, we take that out to the uh, stock market and we buy options on the S&P 500. Now, if you're sitting here and you're an everyday person like I am, you should be asking, OK, how's that work? What's an option? Why do I want to be involved in that? Well, let me show you that. Right? So when we go out to an option, an option is a security that, that tracks the stock market. Right? That S&P 500 option is a security that makes money when the market goes up. Right. So. Let's, let's do this scenario. Let's assume that last November, right, you put, you made a deposit into your account and we're going to lock in on the S&P 500. We're going to take that $4,000 out to the market and we're going to buy that option, right? Now, one year later, we track it for an entire year. You don't make money every day. You don't make money every month. We don't care what happens in between. We're going to watch it from November 1st of 2019 to November 1st of 2020. That's the only day that matters, right? And if the market is up, if the S&P 500 is up, we, American National, we sell that option because it's in the money. That's in bold black there for you to understand. That can, it's called in the money. We take that, we sell it, and we give you the interest that is earned on that uh, option. Now, if the market is down, then that option expires worthless. It's only worth money 
if the market's up. Now, here's how it works, why nobody loses money. Nobody loses money, especially American National and especially you, because we didn't take your principal, we didn't take the money you deposited into the account, we didn't take that and do anything with it. That money is still sitting back at American National, it's sitting in our general account, it's as safe as, uh, uh, as the day is long, so to speak, right? What we took is the interest we would have paid you. You said, I don't want it, right? And so when that happens, then that expires, like I said, that expires worthless. But did we lose any money? American National would have paid you interest. You said, I don't want it. Let's go try to make more. If we make more, fantastic. If we don't, then you didn't lose money. You just made zero interest for that year. You saw, you see it on the graph. Let's take a look of, of, of how it actually works in practical application. We've got a slide next that will show you some of the indexing options. Bring that up there full screen, right? There we go, awesome, thanks. Now, if you look at the, uh, uh, the, the third column in, it says the S&P 500 return. And what this is, this is the returns over the last 20 years. This counts all the losses and all the negatives in the S&P 500. If you look at that and track that all the way to the bottom, you're gonna see over the last 20 years, the S&P 500 on an annual basis, on a calendar year basis, has averaged 4.02%. Interest rates have done that almost, right, with what we're doing. Now, as you look across that, let's just, and not to get into any one of them, but let's just take a look at, uh, at, at, at the math on this. If you've got the the 24% the multiplier over that same 20 year period, it averaged eight. If you've got the, the, the strategy with the cap, it averaged 643. If you have the strategy with the uncapped, it averaged 693. And that's not fair to that one because this past year, it did 24%. When the markets do great, look at the big numbers in that, in that strategy, 21%. 18%, 24%, right? When the market does big numbers, that strategy captures the big number and it multiplies it on your money. And we spend money, we don't spend percentage. And then if you look at the very end, that strategy over the last 20 years has averaged 10.24%. Look at those. Now, the next slide that I have, just want you to see it in philosophy, right? Tony touched on this earlier. He showed you the downs and he showed you the ups in the markets and some of those things. Look at this. This is what the S&P, these are the bull markets for the S&P uh, starting back, what's it starting in uh, 1950, coming through 2016. What if, can you imagine what, the, what your totals, what your portfolios would look like if you eliminated all the red on this slide, what if all your account ever saw was either zero right through the middle of that or green? Think about how much more money that you would have in your account if you eliminate the losses. If we listened to Warren Buffett and followed his number one rule, never lose money, how much would you have? All right, so here's what we need to do today, folks. All right, today you've got you've got an opportunity of a lifetime in this. Right, if you believe in the U.S. economy, you believe in the in the U.S. Uh, markets and so forth. Right, right now is the time for you to get in this, get in this at these low levels of what the markets are doing, and be poised to capture that market upside with zero potential for loss, zero potential for loss. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do now with 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 where you are.